Welcome to the Holistic Yogi Podcast. I am your host, Mala Ingrid, and today I have a very special guest. Her name is Barbara. She is the owner of Spiritual Journey, located in Coral Springs. Hello, and welcome to the show, Barbara. Thank you for joining us. Hi, nice to see you. Thank you for having me. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for becoming part of the, the podcast. I really appreciate you. I wanted to ask um, everybody just to get to know you a little bit. Of you. Let us know a little bit about your journey, um, how you got into this holistic lifestyle, and what brought you, what started you to where you are today. Um, it started back in the 1990s. Um, my mom came down with ALS and, um, I actually had a, uh, psychic, uh, Joseph Labruto. He came and he was doing a party at my house and he handed me a book. And in that book, he goes, you need to read it. And in the book, it, I don't know, it seemed like Reiki kept on popping off of the pages wow. at me. And I read that book. I, I, it must have been one day. And then I went searching for a store that could give me the information on Reiki and what exactly it was. And I was determined to find out the information. And I walked into this one store with uh, Dottie Riley in Pompano and um, asked her if she had any books. She said, yes. And I said, okay, do you know anybody who's doing these classes? She says, well, a matter of fact, I'm having one this weekend. I said, sign me up, I'm here. And my journey started from there. And um, a couple of um, years after that, I got into a bad accident and um, I lost my memory. And I started working with uh, a shaman, Mona Rain. And I went to her three times a week for, God, it has to, had to be eight years. And every day I, I had my mind set exactly what I wanted. And whenever I was in a session with her, my angels would come and they would say, you're gonna have a center. And they would show me my center. And they would say, you will have this and you will have all different types of healing modalities. And um, you, you're, you were gonna have everything that you needed in one place. And then I found out what my purpose was. My purpose here is to awaken people to their purpose. And um, so I love when I teach my Reiki. I love when the students come in and their gifts are coming in and they're going, oh my God, this is what's happening, you know, and I can see the light in their faces, you know, I love it. I absolutely love it. And that's, that's why I'm here. I'm here to awaken people. The first time that I, the first class that I went into, I felt the energy so strong and I, I felt like I was going to explode. <laughs> I, I wanted to expel the energy so much. So you know? bad, right? It was like, somebody give me a body. <laughs> I totally understand that feeling. I've had that feeling where I feel like there's so much truth where I need to go and put my hands on someone too. Right. And, and that's exactly what happened. But it was such a beautiful experience, you know, um, I've learned so much over the years and, um, and I continue to learn, you know, it's not like I took Reiki and then I stopped. Um, I have probably 35 different modalities that I do. Um, I enjoy each and every one of them, but I'm here for one thing. And that is to teach my Reiki. That is to open up people, um, to help them on their journey to wherever they have to go. Um, at least I know that if somebody comes to me and says, okay, I, I'm interested in this. Do you know anybody? I can point them in the direction that they need to be. And that's all I have to do, really, you know. Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> so I own a um, auto repair shop in Pompano Beach called Complete Auto Care. And I have been doing, <laughs> been doing that for 47 years. So um, yes, I have worked on cars myself, <laughs> but um, not so much now, but I, I know my way around. And I love what you said to us that day that we saw you um, because basically that also the money that they take goes back into your company and at the same mm -hmm. time you donate to keep your current foundation correct? I do. I do. Um, well, we know with the ALS, but the other way, how they always came around. Um, I own two dogs that are rescues. And um, so rescues are a big part of me. And um, I came across um, 100 plus abandoned dogs. Um, they had this one um, dog that <clears throat> was having a lot of problems. And it was a, it was a box, boxer, I think he was. And um, for some reason, he just melted my heart when I saw him. And from that day, I started um, raising money for them. So we would have events, um, all the proceeds, any donations for the Reiki circle that we hold uh, in the store goes to 100 plus abandoned dogs. We have a donate button on our website where people can just go on and donate directly to them. Um, over the years, we have given, um, probably close to $13,000 to them uh, that we have raised. And, um, you know, I just, I think that they're doing amazing work. And, you know, I try to help them as much as I can. And uh, the same with ALS. ALS has a big part of my heart because of my mom. Um, her foundation um, is the Ellie Reynolds ALS Foundation. Um, and, um, Every year we have um, golf outings and all different types of, of, of events to help raise money for that. Um, we go to people's houses with that and put up ramps when they need, um, because a lot of people with ALS get stuck in their houses because they can't get through the front door. So we'll put the ramps up so they can get in and out, uh, get them things that they need, redo bathrooms, whatever they need, um, the money goes for that. Um, so, you know, it's, there's two charities that, you know, are a really big part of my life. So. And tell me, what, now that you're here, what are some of the things that you have, like, I know you have the project and the foundation moving forward. What are some things you have on a precise, um, you know, like, you know, what are some of your special projects you have on hand? <laughs> you know, I am, I am so happy at what I do right now. You know, um, I really would like to get more people in to teach more of their, you know, the modalities that they do to help my students that I have taught already um, on their journey because, you know, there's so much out there to learn. There's so many different modalities to learn. And each one, if you really think about it, you can work them all together. I mean, there is, there's times that, you know, when a client comes on my bed, um, mine is a healing session because I combine a lot of my healings together. And I try to give that person what they need at that time. You know, I just don't say, okay, well, hey, I do Reiki, so here, I'm going to stop here. No, you'll get what you need during that session. That's right.
You know, it's funny because when people come into the center, they'll come in and they'll say, I have no clue why I'm here. <laughs> Interesting. That's the first words out of their mouth. I have no clue why I'm here, you know? I and I, I just look at them and I say, well, I know why you're here. <laughs> you may not know, but I do, you know? Um, you know, and then when you sit down and you start to talk to them and you really you really listen, you know, um, and that's, that's the key. You just have to listen to them. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh my God, I love it here. I need to do something. Okay. And I, I do always start off with Reiki because I feel that that opens everyone up and, um, but the timing has to be right for them. So when you walk through that door, that's the first step on their journey. That's all they had to do. After that, the doors open up and say, okay, well, you can pick this, you can pick this, you can go here, you know, but most of them just sit and they'll, they'll be in three or four times and they talk and then they're ready. And then they start knowing if it comes to them. Yeah. Ah, uh, okay. So we have your event coming up, which I'm really, really excited about. Um, I really wanted to bring in meditation and sound healing and um, breath work. And I mean, I just want, these are things that everybody should know how to do. And, and it just feeds the soul. That's what I'm going to say. It feeds the soul. Because every time you do something like that, it just opens you up for something else, yes. you know, and it just raises your vibration. Oh my gosh, I'm getting like a. <laughs> That's true. It does. It. One of the things that I love about the whole transformation of breath work is it allows people hold trauma. You know, we've uh -huh. all been traumatized at some point in our lives and have different beliefs and different life values, some more than others. Some are just an event that maybe might not traumatize you, but it may give you something. You know? But right. It, it, you know, there's just all different types of levels of trauma. We tend to hold it in our hips, our legs, joints, and our body. And moving forward for them, depending on their age, their chakras got shot. You know, there's three chakras that keep, whether it was from a different father, mother, a woman who has, who has seven chakras as a developing from one to one, mother and father, and then they become opposite sex um but if they don't have that connection that's usually when they create some kind of um disbalance in the in the chakra system our when it comes now into the third chakra now it's about taking action and we have a lot of people that deficiency here in the chest and the neck and the shoulder system and the spine and the abdominals and things like that too so i tend to tap in more in the deep and sometimes the grading has brought up for a lot of people Sometimes they get into a panic where they can't breathe. Others go into a uh, more PTSD where they begin to cry. Others are just 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 different. Others laugh. Mm -hmm. I've had that too happen where they start just laughing because they've been crazy and they laugh. And I have them usually in a backpack, just like walk in the back and open up their heart and chest and just give them a moment. I do it just to open up their always in protection so I can and close to as we balance our channel and then they can then begin the process of their breath work and other healing. And sometimes you see a lot of itching on their hands or their feet or their body. And you just keep reminding them, keep them going, keep keep them going. And then all of a sudden they have a breakthrough. And that to me is the most amazing part of it is seeing them be able to come in and speak. Through their pages, their tears. 
but the gospel of Christ. And it's an amazing proceeding to walk through and how they can speak of a whole new dimension where they're, how they walk in and how they're looking around and they just get so stressed out and everything is not even just so in God. Mm -hmm. And they'll sit down and talk about it, and before you know it, once they bring that awareness, they are able to now release it and let go. So it's just very much um, a very holistic way of healing the body and coming to awareness at the same time. And I consider myself a journey um, of ascension. And when I come to realize, I'm kind of glad I'm here because I can't go in without it. Oh yeah. I'm a very I'm a very shallow breather. And that's because I work at the repair shop. All right. So I don't breathe real heavy while I'm there because of the fact of the toxins and the smells and everything else that's around there. So I breathe very, very light. But when I do my energy healing, I am breathing heavy. I do deep breaths. And I open and and I can feel the difference then. Right. It's, yeah. It's amazing. I, my experience is with that when it was more when I was diving into it. I remember um, it's, it was hard at the time, you know, when I was first opening up to the world because I had so much stuff that I was going through at the time and I was just trying to understand and what was happening, but I can remember feeling that. listen to the, the teacher at the time and coach me through it and then to stay in tune with that same breathing because it was very hard for me at first you know yeah. now it's not a problem but at the time it was so hard to oh it's very difficult it very is it really is it's, it's like mm -hmm. you know the simplest things are the hardest you know we're so used to um um doing um everything in a certain pattern that when we have to change it it is. It's very and difficult. Shifting that is, is, it was a difficult a challenge, but I, at the end, I remember the experience I had, and um, it was amazing. You know, and I, I, I felt like floating for two days, you know, uh -huh. like, wow, but that's when I had that experience of that feeling. And the same experience with the plant medicine, I'm very able to feel that floatiness, and then that's when I started to feel like very similar to what I experienced was great to experience all that and then again somehow we were able to tap to our consciousness and come to life on a continuous day and have the ability to do that. You know, but we get so caught up in the in the moment. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Right. That inner knowing. And um, we can always do it all the time. You know, to survive the wild and all that stuff. We can we can feel and it's being able to hear what they're saying. Oh yeah, they're very intuitive. And we have the ability to do that and we can get mm -hmm. sensitized to to the inner child and the inner voice and the gadgets, I guess. Well, too a lot of the electronics and everything else interfere with it and um, way of life, the stress and everything else that we go through, it interferes with all our the intuition, everything. We put up the walls. Yes. We have to learn how to take down the walls. Thank you. 
you know. Yeah. Well, you know, it's perfect because, you know, you know how you feel when you listen to the radio. Okay. A good song comes on all of a sudden you're like, all right, let's go. <laughs> you know, and, and it's because it's sing, it feel, we feel it. Okay. Sound healing is the same thing. It resonates with your body. You know, when I was, when I had my accident, um, I had a lot of head trauma and I used monks chanting to, to heal, to heal my head. That's, I mean, every session, that's what we played. The monks were chanting. And then I would go visit the temple down in Miami. And I would physically go and sit there and listen to them chant. And that's what healed. That's what made me heal. It's incredible how the human person can actually heal themselves. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's because we we get a diagnosis at, from a doctor, and then all of a sudden, we feed into that. What if we didn't? What if we said, no, nope, I don't have it. That's it. You know, I'm totally healthy. What if we said that? You know? That's yeah. Brain is. Definitely. And we Defin don't use it all the way. Not at all. Not at all. You, the doctor says that you have it then guess what? You're going to believe it. And hey, you would believe anything that they say because they're a doctor. Okay. But you know what? We just have to learn to change what the way we think. Turn things around and think of the positive. And you know what? What you who targeted it, and I said, Okay, so now I know what triggers it, uh -huh. and I learned to just slowly over the course of time. I started that at nine, I think 16 was my last seizure ever, and that was because my first day back in the hospital, I was reducing the pills that they gave me. Uh -huh. Okay. 
grave. And I had faith in the angels and the saints to get there. Lo and behold, I had a magical dream of birth. And I was nice. in the That's when I knew my past was my past. My decision against me was the last one I ever had. To say that this, you know, that God might have said, there's an office that was being sent to me to hold on to. I must, I must go over to David and find him. And I'm not going to start up another first thing to save the king. That's beautiful. It's just amazing. So I was thinking, and like you, know, you told me that your car accident had been made to help him too. So now I have a headache. You know, he's just living with a headache. And he said, "You, it is your sound. He was your mom. He was your you know." Yeah, the old, and it's funny because every once in a while there'll be a word that I can't say, and it's so funny because I know the word. I'm looking at the word but I can't connect it from the head to the mouth, <laughs> you know, and it's, and it's, it's really, it's very, very frustrating, but um, anybody that comes in here knows about, you know, the, the head injury that I had and they know, you know, that sometimes I'll try to say it, it's just not coming out. Okay. And, um, but I've learned to laugh about it and I don't let it bother me. And I just, you know, go on teaching and doing everything else that I'm supposed to be doing just the way I want to do it. You know, I said, one day I'm going to be able to say these words, <laughs> you know, okay. okay. you know? Have you tried uh, cranial sacral? I tried it many years ago. I did try it. I remember uh -huh. when I left my house, it was beautiful. I love that. But I was only one person. After that, I have not found another person to go that I had lost. I'm going to tell you, Mona Rain does the best yeah. cranial sacral. Oh, yeah. she. That's what she used to do on, my, on me all the time. And I have yet to find anybody else that yeah, does it the same way. She's amazing. Yeah, you don't find them. I, I only found that one mm -hmm. person, and I think I stopped since then. The person who came through an event I was doing, I think at the time, and I brought them over at the time when I was teaching them at the school in the Bay Area, and I did a workshop with them. And I had a good set of people coming in, but I lost contact after that, and I don't know what happened to them. I'll give you her name. <laughs> but that's it. They're not that many. No, it really isn't. No. no. And, and she, she, you know, I love the way she does it. Um, first of all, she works with, as a shaman, <laughs> she's never worked with angels before, but she does now. Oh, that's her? She does it. Well, she does now. <laughs> um, because of me, um, when they, when she first started working with me, my angels were very, very protective of me and they would not let her anywhere near me. Um, I had to tell them it was okay, that she was only trying to help. And um, they slowly started letting her in and then they started working with her and actually telling her what I needed. And it was amazing because not only did I learn about my angels and what they could do. And, um, but I was learning about shamanism at the same time. And I started getting into all of that. And I was like, oh my gosh, you know, um, it, it, it's, it was the journey that I have been on has been amazing. 
And everything that I have learned and every person that I have met on that journey came in for a reason. They were either teaching me something or I was learning, you know, a, a lesson, you know. So it's been it's been quite quite a journey. I love that's, that. that's the coolest thing. That's yeah, really it, I wanna but, talk a little bit about our event that's coming up on March 5th. We will post it and um the number of people who go will also be with my people. I'll make sure I have that link too. So you know I want to have this podcast because I'm gonna need the hospital for sure in camp. I feel anybody that is local in the Gulf Springs or Florida or anywhere in Miami, um, the Fort Lauderdale, the Gulf West Palm, West yeah. West Palm Beach mm -hmm. are available and are able to come on the fifth, which is what one Friday, correct? Or is it right. It's a Saturday it's a on the Saturday. fifth from uh two to four. Two to four, yes. And I'll be we'll be working with sound a sound healer, Reiki. You'll be there as well. So people who can't sit up get a chance to meet you and um and myself as well. So I'll be taking you guys through this beautiful ceremony where we get to hang out and it's very very glowing and open and then let's go ahead and go to the sound healing which is one of the most inherent weapons we can use the the spirit will let you come so it will be very heartfelt and beautiful i can't wait i'm waiting patiently <laughs> we have had such a beautiful experience and everybody gets a little gift at the end and thank you for showing up and thank you for being here and um as you all know our opening one anniversary today is being big charity right no the um the honor to work with you i'm really excited this is our first event <laughs> so i'm excited and is there anything barbara you have any words of wisdom you would like to share with the listeners today you know right now um there's so much going on and what i just want to put out there is to share the love with others listen when somebody needs to actually just talk just give them an ear you know it doesn't take much to listen to somebody and you really never know what somebody else is going through so you know be nice you know we have too much anger in the world we just need to sp spread that love as much as we can So um, we're going to end up closing this session right now, and I want to thank all my viewers. Thank you so much for being participating and also um, following me. And please like and subscribe for those that are my YouTube followers, my Anchor, and my Spotify. You guys will also be able to um, sponsor yourself if you want. And anything you donate to will help as well to keep going. And I want to say thank you so much, Barbara, for joining us today. Uh, thank you for having us. We will have also your information at the end of the bottom of the link so that way anybody that wants to go ahead and reach directly to you or come to your store has the opportunity to do so. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, guys.